Two million years ago, early humans roamed the temperate lands of the earth, relying on berries, fruit, and meat for survival. This meat was raw, lacking in vital nutrients and stunting our evolution. But then, we discovered something that would change the course of human history forever. Increasing our intelligence, protecting us from predators, and allowing us to populate the globe. Humans had learned to control fire! Hi and welcome to another episode of Physics Time. This week we're going to be talking about fire. So, what is fire? Good question Fraser. Fire is simply the process of combustion. That is the reaction between oxygen and fuel. But we'll talk more about that later. Right now what we're going to talk about is what you generally think of when you think of fire, which is the bright flame that it produces. Andy, tell us more. Fire generally appears as a bright flame. This flame is hot gas that is so hot that it emits light. At the bottom we have the hottest part of the flame, which is blue. And at the top we have the cooler part of the flame, which is yellow. This is a good indicator of how hot the flame is. So where does the light come from in a fire? Well, I have this football here and it's going to represent an electron in the hot gas of our flame. So, our electron starts off in a low energy state. And then the heat in the flame excites it to a higher energy level. Now, this isn't very stable, and our electron ends up falling back down to our ground state. And as it does this, the energy lost is emitted as a photon. A photon is a packet of light energy. Now this gap between the two levels is what gives us our colour. So different materials will have different gaps, and this is why different materials emit different colours when they burn. <laughs> So what exactly do we need to make a fire? Well, you might say we might need a match, but no, we don't need matches. What we need is we need some fuel. We need some oxygen. And we need heat. You know how to do it, yeah. Once we've got those things, then we can start making a fire. Let's think about what might happen if we remove one of the elements. So if we take out the oxygen, for instance. Here we have a candle, alone and in the dark. Along comes a flame to light the wick, which will eventually heat the wax, causing it to melt and evaporate into a wax vapour. This wax vapour is what causes the flame as it burns. Sadly, it's not to last. As we stick a glass over the candle, the oxygen will slowly run out, and slowly the candle withers and dies. So let's take a closer look at the chemical reaction that happens within fire. Here we see some bright young chemical compounds within our fuel linked together and awaiting the day. Let's see what occurs as we provide them with energy in the form of this manufactured spinning disc. Oh, the energy causes wild oscillations and the compound splits into individual atoms. But alone as they are, they have nowhere to go. Ah, here we see an oxygen atom floating around. Shall we see what happens as we provide energy in this case? The compound splits forthwith and the braver atom now joins with the oxygen, releasing a lot of energy. Fare thee well, lover atom. Now that we've learned some of the science behind fire, let's put that science into action and make our very own charcoal-fired barbecue. We didn't shake it last time, it doesn't go so great. Where's the matches going? Oh, I had the matches going down. Bye. <laughs> Disappointing. Ugh. <laughs> oh. Failure. Oh, what? So 
Yeah. So, this is not how to light a barbecue. Yeah, go Fraser. Oh, yeah. No. Oh. It's got a blue torch or something. Who hasn't these days? Come on, take, take, take. Here we go. Yes. Yes, fire's happening. There we go, I can go there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so here we've got our heat from hot coals. And we've got our oxygen in the air. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fuel, wood. And then this is going to set on fire. Now you can see that the heat decomposes some of the cellulose material in the wood and that produces gases such as what we know as smoke and now the twigs are on fire and then the cellulose material from this will burn down into char and ash so after the fire is burned down all we're left with is char which is just pure carbon and ash which is the unburnable minerals such as calcium and potassium Okay, so this week on Physics Time, we learnt about fire. We learnt about flames and how they are actually just hot gas, which is so hot that it emits light. We also learnt how to make fire. We learnt about the fire triangle, that we need three elements, oxygen, heat and fuel to make a fire. And we saw what happens if we remove one of those elements, the fire doesn't happen. Also, we learnt about Frisbees. We took a look at the chemical reactions that happen when you make a fire and we also learned that when you set fire to wood the incombustible materials within the wood uh, get heated up and they decompose into smoke and also into char and ash. And that was this week's Physics Time. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next week. Bye bye!